Okay, so why do we really care about glide slope mode? I can give you a, a great example of why we should care about glide slope mode. So we're going to look at an instrument approach, and it's a pretty notorious uh, approach. This is the localizer DME echo into Aspen Airport. And the important thing to know about this approach is that it's a circling only approach. And the reason it's a circling only approach is because there are mountains that you bottleneck yourself into as you come down into Aspen. And in order uh, to be able to make it out, say you need to execute a missed approach, they restrict you and only allow you to come down in a category C, 2,383 feet is the lowest that you can be at, at the missed approach point, which is C egg. Okay, so normally that number, uh, if you're shooting an ILS, an instrument uh, approach, is 200 feet. Well, this is 2,000, almost 2,400 feet because there's mountains in the way and they don't want you to bottleneck yourself in if you need to escape, if you need to execute a missed approach. So with glide slope mode, we can figure out what our gradient, our descent gradient is at the missed approach point. And if we're category C, we need to be doing 121 knots or faster. So let's say that we're 125 knots to be within the, the category C uh, for this approach. So we're doing 125 knots, we're coming down, we get to SEAG, we can set up in our watch the rise over run. Okay, so the rise is the altitude we'd need to lose, which is 2,383 feet uh, from the missed approach point to uh, field elevation here. Okay, so uh, the run is 2.6 nautical miles. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the rise over run and we're going to bump that 2383 to 2400 feet of rise and we'll do uh, the run of 2.6 so 2400 feet over 2.6 is going to give us our gradient which is about 9.2 degrees 900 and 2930 feet per nautical mile for uh, when you're at the missed approach point at Aspen. Okay, so we're doing 125 knots, all right? So uh, that's about two nautical miles per minute. We can quickly find out by putting this into the watch that at the missed approach point, we need to descend about 1900 feet per minute. We could say between 18 and 1900 feet per minute which is insane. That number is huge, especially if you consider that for the circling approach, we're not fully configured, so we still need to add flaps. Uh, not super stable uh, approach, if you ask me, but it's allowed, and um, you have to be good in order to do it. The normal instrument uh, approach on ILS is three degrees, okay? So let's compare that 9.2 degree uh, glide slope to a three degree uh, normal standard approach. All right, so instead of having uh, to do what we'd have to do at Aspen of, uh, what did we say, 2,000 feet per minute, uh, a three degree at, at uh, two nautical miles per minute is gonna give us 600 feet, okay, at 125 knots, 600 feet per minute descent. Not 2,000 feet per minute. That 2,000 feet per minute descent, uh, you have to ex know that it's coming. You have to expect it. If you are in icing conditions in Aspen and you're flying an aircraft, say a jet, where you need to keep your power up in order to keep the engines hot, uh, that's going to be hard to do if you also need to descend at 2,000 feet per minute. you got to pull the power back. So you got to be way ahead of the game if you uh, have boots on your wings and uh, you need to pop the boots. You need to make sure you've shed the ice off of your tail that you may have accumulated and, and you uh, it's not recommended you do configuration changes unless you 
do that step. So uh, Aspen can really get you in trouble if you're not paying attention and setting all of these parameters up in the watch can really help your situational awareness in an airport such as Aspen. Okay, so I thought it would also be uh, fun and also appropriate to discuss departure procedures and how uh, climb gradients can uh, be calculated using the watch for departure procedures. So here we have uh, Aspen again. Okay, we've got the Lens 8 departure, which is uh, a departure you would use if you uh, did not have a GPS capability and Lens 8 is one of the uh, few departures that they have in Aspen so it's commonly used when departing Aspen. The Lens 8 requires uh, in order for you to be able to leave or depart Aspen you have to be able to climb at a rate of 465 feet per nautical mile and you have to be able to do that all the way up to 10,000 feet. Your aircraft would have to be able to perform that climb all the way up to 10,000 feet, 465 feet per nautical mile. So let's go ahead and uh, set up 465 feet uh, per nautical mile. And in jets, if we lose an engine, then we pitch for what is known as V2, which is the uh, speed that we're supposed to climb out at uh, on a single engine with a single engine. So let's say we calculate our V2 speed for the day and we figure out that if we lost an engine we will pitch for a hundred knots. Well a uh, hundred knots is uh, probably about 1.6 1 1 nautical miles per minute. Okay so what would we need to see if we lost an engine we're climbing out at a hundred knots in order to meet that restriction of 460 okay one last thing I thought that might be interesting to think about is let's say you're flying along in a 172 and you lose an engine and uh, you're at 8,000 feet okay you can pitch for oh, say uh, best glide or VG of 65 knots okay uh, let's say you pitch for VG and you know that you're descending at 800 feet per minute okay uh, let's not do a direct relationship though let's say we're at 6,000 feet and we pitch for 65 knots and we see uh, that we're doing a descent of 800 feet per minute okay so if we set up that 6,000 feet now we're in minutes mode here 6,000 feet, 800 feet per minute, it's going to take us about seven and a half minutes to descend, okay? So, all right, you, you've done uh, your emergency procedures, you've tried to start up that engine, she's not coming back, uh, you've called, uh, you know, and declared an emergency, and now you're down to, oh, let's say 4,000 feet. Okay, we'll just say 4,500 feet. Okay, now you know you got about five and a half minutes. All right, now let's go ahead and, and figure out we're doing 65 knots. We're, we're also doing about almost one mile a minute. So we can also figure out that we're going to travel a distance of almost 5.5 miles. Okay, so that's, that's not very far. Um, you could easily just quickly figure out though I mean how far you're gonna be able to make it uh, with no engines okay so essentially you're, you're you're setting up a glide ratio of sorts uh, or finding your glide ratio and figuring out how far can I go at the altitude that I'm at and the speed that I'm traveling so uh, that's also a fun little thing to think about in practice and maybe be ready to use if you own a watch like this Okay, it's really important to understand uh, 
the major differences between glide slope mode and minutes mode and how uh, if you use one or the other you need to understand how all of the parameters are changing and you also need to understand what happens to your true airspeed or uh, your speed that you use uh, in your calculations and you should be using ground speed. You'd base that off of your GPS uh, and it would tell you if you didn't have a GPS then you would do the next best thing. You would do your true airspeed and try to figure out what your tailwind or your headwind was and then base that number off of your nautical miles per minute. But ground speed is true airspeed uh, calculated for headwinds or tailwinds. So you need to understand what happens to true airspeed as you climb and what happens to true airspeed as you descend. And for true airspeed as you climb, it increases 2% for every 1,000 feet that you climb. So if, say, you're at 250 knots and you climb 15,000 feet, then your true airspeed is going to increase by 75 knots on top of the 250. So by the time you climb that additional 15,000 feet, your true airspeed would now be 325 knots. So if air traffic control gave us a crossing restriction, say we were at 10,000 feet, we're doing 250 knots. We're at 10,000 feet and they tell us that we need to be at 25,000 feet. We need to climb 15,000 feet. We need to be at 25,000 feet and 80 nautical miles or less. Okay, so in minutes mode, we would set up the 80 nautical miles over 250 knots, which is about four nautical miles per minute. And then you could see, okay, it's gonna uh, take me uh, 20 minutes. I need, uh, I need to do this climb within 20 minutes, okay? So you would find, again, uh, as a refresher, the altitude you need to change, and you could figure out that you need to do oh, about 760, 770 feet per minute. Now, let's say you pitched up 700 and we'll say 800 feet per minute. You pitched up 800 feet per minute, and you maintain that all the way up to 25,000 feet. You would not meet the crossing restriction because your true airspeed actually would be increasing. In, in minutes mode, if your true airspeed increases, you all you need to change the relationship of your distance over your speed. Okay, so I'll give you the example now in glide slope mode, and maybe you can see where the major weakness lies in minutes mode. All right, so we know that we're at 10,000 feet, uh, and we need to change a uh, 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 15,000 feet, okay? So our rise is 15 and our run is 80. So we'll go ahead and set uh, 15,000 feet over 80 nautical miles. All right, and we can see that uh, it's about a uh, almost, it's 190 feet per nautical mile uh, climb that we need to do. All right, so at 250 knots, four nautical miles per minute, there it is, we need to do between seven and 800 feet per minute. As our true airspeed increases to, if we said 325 knots, 2% per 1,000 feet that you climb, your true airspeed increases, then we really should have been doing uh, almost 1,000 feet per minute instead of 750 feet per minute. And we don't have to change any of the parameters in glide slope mode to figure out, okay, I'm get, getting faster. Well, my climb also needs to increase. My rate of climb needs to increase. If it doesn't, then uh, let's, let's say that we did, um, we maintained as our true airspeed increased, we maintained that 750 uh, foot per minute climb and our true airspeed increased. Well, we just decreased our glide slope and our rise over run is not sufficient enough to meet the restriction that air traffic control gave us. So let's go back to minutes mode and, and, and see how uh, that works, okay? So uh, we know that we need to do um, the, what was it? Uh, 
250 knots, 80 nautical miles, right? Okay, so uh, as our true airspeed and subsequently our ground speed increases in nautical miles per minute, we have to physically turn the dial to match our distance to what we think our true airspeed is going to be at the top of the climb, which it's going to take about 15 minutes instead of what we thought was about 18, 19 minutes. In glide slope mode, you don't have to turn the, the dial. You can set up the rise over run, and everything's in proportion to one another. But when you change minutes, when you change minutes, you keep that proportion, you keep the glide slope. If you don't change the minutes and you change your airspeed, you, without knowing it, could be changing the glide slope and you will not meet the climb uh, gradient. So okay, now we know that we'd run the risk of not meeting a climb restriction if we base it on the, the airspeed that we're at down low and as we climb. That, is, that airspeed's gonna increase and we also would have to increase our rate of climb to keep the glide slope in proportion. Now, it doesn't work against you, it actually works in your favor if you're descending because as you're descending, you're bleeding uh, off airspeed. Uh, your true airspeed degrades by 2% per 1,000 feet. So let's say we're given the crossing restriction of 80 nautical miles uh, and we're doing 360 knots, okay? And the 15,000 foot example, if we needed to descend 15,000 feet, then we could see that we need to do 1,100 feet per minute. Now, as we descend and our true airspeed decreases, so too does that relationship of our distance. So let's say now uh, that the 250 knots we talked about, let's go ahead and put 80 nautical miles over 250 knots. Now that 15,000 feet descent, is down to 800 feet per minute. And if we were doing the original uh, uh, calculation of 1,100 feet per minute, we would beat the crossing restriction in a descent, whereas in a climb, we would not meet the crossing restriction. So you have to be aware uh, of the strengths and the weaknesses using these calculations you need to have a buffer when you are climbing and doing crossing restrictions